Hey guys, it's Fimarin91, and I'm talking about the Xbox Series S. Now, quick recap, the Xbox Series S is a much weaker version, digital only, of the Xbox Series X, basically. I'm not going to go into the full specs, but apparently the Xbox Series S may be holding back certain devs when it comes to developing games for both the Xbox Series X. According to Paul Leckie, who is an executive at XOR Studios, he was discussing the Rift Breaker, which is a survival game on the Xbox Series X and S. This is what he had to say. The size of the memory that is available in the XSS is the actual determining point for the entire console generation as gameplay features have to be fitted to the lowest spec. From the point of view of a developer, it would be much easier if there was a single XSX SKU. Now, I'm not a developer. Basically, what this seems to mean in layman terms to me is that because they have to make the game for the lowest spec, spec, as he pointed out, fitted to the lowest spec, it does maybe hold back from them making the game as good as it could be on like at least the Xbox Series X, right? Now, later on, they did say that some have praised the XSS for being easier to develop for than the wide spectrum of PC configurations out there. Now, that's probably a true statement too. Right now, I believe console developers are only getting a little taste of what it is for PC game developers out there because PC game developers have to basically make sure their game can run almost on like, I'm just gonna use the term, a potato. <laughs> and they have to make sure that it also looks good on like some of the higher hardware out there. PC games have such a wide spectrum of which PCs you can play them on. So it seems like we're getting a little taste of how that is. Not a full taste, but a little taste because the Xbox Series S is so much weaker than the Xbox Series X. But based on that quote, it seems like the RAM is actually the biggest issue because the Xbox Series S only has 10 gigabytes of RAM while the Series X and the PS5 have 16 gigabytes. So whether or not, as to quote Review Tech USA, the Xbox Series S may bottleneck this Xbox Series X at least, is remains to be seen because it does seem like at least two devs have already talked about this, right? But at the same time, it's a little too early to tell, I'm saying. Right now, let's face it, not many games are on the next set of systems like that. So even though this may be a problem in the future, I just don't know. Right now, I still think the way Microsoft did it, I still think it's better than the way that PS5 did it. Yes, not for the developers, but for the consumers. Because I think there's a good amount of people who still may not own 4K televisions and may not care about actual hardware when it comes to purchasing their games. They may basically just purchase them all on Microsoft Store. So the Xbox Series S, I think, is a very affordable option for many people who may not be able to take advantage of even having the Xbox Series X because they don't even own a 4K television. So the way Microsoft did it, I still think it was a good way. Now, I really think time will tell because usually it's not near the beginning of a console's lifetime where you really see the effect. It's more near the mid end because by then developers are really comfortable with the console. They're really taking advantage of all the hardware. And we're, I think we're gonna have to wait like maybe a good two years at least before we really see whether the Xbox Series S to, to use what Review Tech USA said is bottlenecking the Xbox Series X. But what do you guys think about this? Do you guys think the Xbox Series S will bottleneck the Xbox Series X and maybe even the PS5? Let me know in the comments below. When it comes to third-party games, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe, and God bless you all.